evening, everybody. Welcome to a slightly chilly and uh, actually a little bit misty Carrow Road uh, in the wake of Norwich City's 3-1 victory over Birmingham City. It's a, a win that's taking them one point uh, outside of the playoffs now. It's a win that has dragged them back into contention. It's a win they had to work hard for, but it's a win that on the balance of, of the game and the, and the way that it transpired, they probably deserved. Um, before I come to that goal, and I will come to that goal, I promise, uh, I, I want to kind of assess the game first. So, uh, again, similarly to, to a lot of Norwich City performances recently, you can kind of chop it straight down the middle. First half, I thought they were excellent. Uh, I thought they played some really, really good football, intelligent football, executed the press really well, but, but also their work in possession was good. We didn't have any kind of the characteristic errors that perhaps we've associated with this Norwich City group in recent weeks. Uh, it was control. It was dominant. They were... Um, combining well uh, in, in kind of all, all thirds of the pitch and all, all, all sections of the pitch. Um, and they were carving out opportunities, maybe not ones that you would define as being clear cut opportunities and, and really working the goalkeeper, but they were carving out opportunities and they were linking well. And it was just structurally a very good half of football where they dominated and they deserved to be ahead uh, by the margin that they were ahead at half time. So that was the first half. The second half was a little bit more of a struggle. Birmingham uh, tweaked the system a little bit. They took a man out of midfield. They put Lukas Jukovic on, who's always a handful, very physical, uses his physicality and his body so well. Um, and, and that pinned Norwich in a little bit. But there was also a slight tweak that they made to their press, which, which helped matters. Uh, and also Norwich's levels dropped a little bit. And all of that combined made it a little bit more of a difficult half, a little bit more stodgy, a little bit more, more difficult. But actually... In many ways, it's it's the type of half of football that we've seen from Norwich City where they probably struggle to drag themselves through it when that adversity has kind of hit them in the face. Usually they've crumbled or they've had a moment where they've they've really struggled to get their head around it. But tonight, actually, they, they negotiated it, maybe not well, but they got through it. And look, part of that is down to Birmingham's lack of quality and their lack of quality in the in the final third. I think they've lost they lost seven out of nine coming into this game. They're almost being dragged into a, a, a relegation battle. But actually, uh, Norwich did kind of cut off various avenues. We didn't see the avalanche of the box that perhaps we were anticipating. Uh, and obviously, they killed the game in time with, with a goal on the counter-attack. So even in stoppage time, there was kind of this willingness to press and willingness to engage and willingness to spring forward in transition that uh, we're beginning to see quite a bit of now under David Wagner. And it's, it's, it's quite easy to like. So um, that's really interesting. Uh, and I think actually that second half where you saw Birmingham kind of swing stuff in their favour a little bit, it's difficult because when Norwich are playing uh, or when you have a process-based coach who wants to play a certain style of football, a certain uh, system, certain players within that system who maybe suit it, 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 it then is kind of against their nature to maybe put an extra man in midfield or to tweak the formation or to tweak what you're doing because that's ideolo ideologically what you believe. So the tweaking in David Wagner's view has to come from within the system. So uh, it was interesting that he, he, he kind of pulled Yanulis off for, from Aramadeli. That kind of felt to counter the, the pressure that was coming from the, the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side, sorry, from Birmingham. But then they took Chong off, so that kind of doubled, its, doubled itself up that way. Uh, Christos Solis came on, Jakob Sorensen came on. Um, and, and all of that was, was kind of geared, I felt, towards kind of countering and tweaking and, and kind of... Um, stopping the t uh, sort of halting the side, I guess. Um, but again, I, I felt that whilst Birmingham probably had a little bit better, particularly in that first half of the second half, they probably didn't have the quality that was required to break this Norwich City team down. So uh, in the end, Norwich were able to navigate that period pretty well and, and actually looked a threat on the counter-attack on a couple of occasions. So um, they got through it, but I wouldn't necessarily say that was down to their, their ideological kind of outlook or, or the way that they tweet things. It was more kind of a combination of a lack of quality in Birmingham, probably running out of ideas and out of steam in the end. Um, let's let's talk about that goal, shall we? I mean, to be honest, I could have filled this verdict all 15 minutes of it talking about, about Marcelino Nunez's opening strike. It's just glorious, just glorious. And uh, of a season where it feels certainly that way, that we've been deprived of real moments of quality and mystical, uh, wonderful moments that make you kind of feel like you did when you, when you were a kid and you were falling in love with the game. And you know, it was actually after the ball hit the back of the net and there was the initial, you know, sort of roar of celebration. There was a real sort of calm silence, kind of almost in disbelief as people were kind of trying to soak in what they'd just seen him do. And I think what's interesting about him is he's always had that technical quality. If there was one player in this Norwich City group that you would kind of look at to, to complete that, that 
piece of skill and uh, with that technique and that control, it would be Marcelino Nunez because of what we've seen. The, the problem has been more so of consistency and more, and more kind of tactical issues and him getting lost in games and maybe not quite having the right system or, or maybe even sometimes necessarily the, the, the right kind of coach to get it out of him. But it was a, a really, really stunning strike. Um, the technique as well is so hard because he has to come to his right. He was almost running on to the ball from the right to then hit it with the control and the, the power that he did and the accuracy that he did to get it up and down so quickly to strike it as true as he did with the, with his laces the way he watched the ball his body shape to make sure he wasn't leaning back too much even those very minute details it is an unbelievable strike to get all of those um actions correct and aligned within pretty much a second of that ball looping up in the air as i said it was kind of coming away from him so he's come, kind of coming round onto the ball before striking it into the back of the net. It, it, it is really wonderful. I'm just going to change the camera angle a little bit, which is always a little bit brave. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. There we go. That's better. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful strike, a beautifully executed strike. And it was a strike worthy, to be honest, of winning this game. And, and irrespective of what we saw for the next however many minutes was after that, nothing was going to top that moment in terms of quality. And actually, uh, I think there's a question mark in this title saying goal of the season. Take it out. It is goal of the season for, for, for Minori City perspective certainly but to, to to execute that with the technique and, and and the accuracy that he did just magnificent and, and unbelievable and for him it's been quite an enduring season so he's been playing competitive football since last February uh, because of the way the Chilean football system works so he's, he's kind of been playing for a year now solid without kind of a summer break or an end of season break um, he's only 22 that's quite relentless uh, so, so I think that maybe accounts for the ups and downs that maybe we've seen in his performances at points but actually the technical quality is there and this is why Norwich City wanted to bring him here because he has that quality he has that kind of spark and that instinct and that creativity that can flip a game on its head but can win you games but also there are frustrating moments there's one moment in the first half in particular where I got frustrated at him because he just held on to the ball for a little bit too long and it's it's those moments and those little those little bits that actually the coaches need to get their claws into and, and kind of get out of him. And I believe they will because actually as the raw components, the kind of technical aspects are there now. Um, and I think they've been there since the moment he turned up and that's why he had such a bright start. Whether the kind of fatigue from a year of playing football is, has taken its toll, I'm not sure. But actually, as impressive as the first goal was, the second one was really good for, for another set of reasons because I was just listening to David Wagner describe it as the perfect sort of number 10 goal almost. But the run he makes is brilliant to, to, to kind of, Adam Eder creates a space first and foremost, but then to take that space to run into it. I don't think the finish is probably as he, as he would have liked and it probably didn't have the accuracy and technique of his first one, but he got enough on it to, to push it into the ground up and into the back of the net. It's a, again, a, a really important finish. And at that point in the game, a, a really important goal as well for Norwich City because for all of the control and domination that they had, we now saw that reflected in, in, in the scoreline. Um, and it was a wonderful moment for him. I'm sure it will give him massive confidence. Which, of course, you have to remember the context as well. He's coming to a game where Norwich are without their two top strikers. Tem Mabuki was in the stand watching, as was Josh Sargent. Both of them not fit enough to make the match day squad today. And there was an onus on him and Adam Eder to come up with those creativity, to come up with the goals, to score one like he did the first one. <laughs> not bad. To, to then go and score a second one, really, really important in terms of the context of the game and Norwich assuming control of it. And obviously that cushion, that buffer that they built in the first half through two real moments of quality from him, both a, a wonderful piece of, of invention and skill and improvisation, but also a really clever movement to, to, to get beyond the Birmingham back line and score. That gave Norwich enough of a buffer to really allow them to have the spell in the second half where they just stepped off it a bit, but, but also to kind of regain control. The goal that they concede is poor, but I've got to be honest, it's the only real chance that Birmingham had all evening. I think there was a free header from, from Gary Gardner relatively late on as well. And there was one that was flashed across the post after what I felt was a foul in the middle of pitch. I want to say on Sarah, but I might be wrong. Um, but beyond those three moments, Birmingham didn't create much. They didn't really look like creating much. They looked like a team that's in a poor run of form and in a bad way and that needs a spark and a boost in a different sense. So, um, again, that, that in terms of the context of the game was, was, was interesting. And as I mentioned, Norwich were in this this hold and, and, and had this spell where it felt like Birmingham, as we've seen this season, the script kind of suggests that they were going to come back in the game. And uh, we've seen Norwich um, levels drop before and they've dropped so radically that they've kind of cost them points and it's kind of cost them um, games of football. But actually, this was one where they were able to kind of dig in and endure and actually ride out the, the poor 
spell that they had. And in the end, they, they went on to add a third. And it was Marcelino Nunez again, Adam Ida, um found him. Lovely chip ball. And there's Christos Solis, who hasn't scored since August 2021. That game against AFC Bournemouth in, in, the, in the League Cup when he... Uh, when he, he, he scored a hat-trick that night and was unbelievable. And obviously he's endured a very difficult spell since then. But it was a, a really good bit of play. I was actually urging him as he was running towards the box, go on, cut, cut inside and finish, cut inside and finish, cut inside and finish. That's exactly what he did. It's a glorious finish into the far corner. Uh, and I hope now that that will give him the confidence boost that he needs. There's a real talented player in there and we've all seen it. And that's why... Norwich City have spent near on £10 million to bring him to Carrow Road in the first place because they believe that. David Wagner believes in it. He spoke about having a plan for him. I think he needs that. I think he needs that structure. He needs someone to put their arm around him to, to kind of guide him through and coach him through. But if they can get more out of, more like that out of him, um, then the talent uh, is absolutely there. And now he's got that, you've got to say he's surely got to be pushing for a start now and it just I felt and I think I've said this on a previous video but it might have been a podcast it might have been one of them, both um, it just needed like he needed a moment off the bench to really kind of announce himself or re-announce himself uh, and he needed a moment to kind of push him closer to the starting 11 that was it tonight beautiful curl finish beyond John Ruddy into the back of the net sealed, sealed the, the points wonderful scenes in, in this place at the end we haven't seen that too much this season a uh, lovely moment when David Wagner pushed Marcelino Nunez forward to take the claim rightly so um oh, oh I, I do want to know actually uh if you're watching this video obviously if you're watching it live you can comment now if you're watching it after the, you can comment uh, after which goal was better marcelino nunez is tonight or johnny house against nottingham forest in 2017 i'm not sure yet i, I might have to watch it i might have to watch it a few more times oh, unfortunately to really make that judgment but my first thought was that house was better and then i've seen an angle where it was just to the right and he's coming around the ball and then to get the technique on it and then I thought, oh, maybe Nunez is better. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting debate. I think everyone's going to have a different answer. Two absolutely stunning goals, two really different goals. I think the height that Housen managed to control his with and the technique that he used where he almost kind of flung his hips at it. Uh, and, yeah, I can, I can see there's, there's a couple of Johnny Housens and, uh, and a couple of Marcelino Nunez already. So it's, it's fairly split, right? And I guess it's a, it's a subjective argument. It's a nice kind of conversation to to have as well but that's a, a really interesting one a few answers uh steven says house and robert says house and adam says nunez uh mark robson says nunez so again uh, it, it was a magnificent goal and uh it encapsulated you know what was a, a really good evening for for nori city here tonight i wanted to mention adam Eder as well because he's he's had some some criticism which i felt has been quite harsh i thought he was he was pretty good tonight actually there were a couple of moments where he got caught offside and, and stuff like that every strike gets caught offside by the way it's not just him but some of his movements were intelligent he linked the play well at points there was one moment uh, and i think it was for nunez and he got flagged offside brilliant bit of, of, of center forward play when he took the ball in spun his man and then tried to find nunez in behind it was uh, again just a absolutely the sort of thing that you want to see him doing and and, and you want to see him doing consistently but he he was tireless he had a moment before half time where uh, he was played through i think from Sarah and Ruddy produced an excellent save just think he needs a bit of luck he needs that goal and he'll be uh, and he'll be off and running um but i wanted to to save him because for some reason he's been battered with this five year contract he he didn't give himself that he he wasn't um, he was he, he he signed that because he was presented with it by the football club. So any criticism that some people may have, rightly or wrongly, doesn't need to be directed at Adamida for signing a contract that was put in front of his face. It needs to be, if if you feel that way, needs to be uh, placed towards the football club. I I don't feel that way. I think actually he has all the components that you need to be a very very good striker and to be a complete striker. And I. I I disagree with how people are framing his goals because they're, you know, people say, oh, well, he's got whatever, it's five goals and 70 odd appearances. Yeah, but this was his 13th start tonight. Only his 13th in four seasons at Norwich City. I know he's 22. I know strikers are ultimately judged on goals, but he's had to play a lot of it to second fiddle to Tame Fuki. Lots of strikers have done that. And, and if you do that and you're getting 10 minutes here and there, well, guess what? Your goal record's not going to be that great because you don't have enough to impact it. But also, you don't get a consistent run of games to impact it. He's not Tame Fuki. He's a different striker. He, he has different qualities, but he has qualities. And if Norwich City can utilise them and he has a better structure around him and Marcelino Nunez provided him with excellent support tonight, he will get goals. I, I do believe that. Uh, and I think we will see an uplift. I think we need one. I think we need one and I think we, we could go away. Whether that comes, of course, before Temer Puki and Josh Sargent come back is probably a different conversation to be had. But um, 
I do think there is just a need just to lay off him for a bit, to get behind him. The five-year contract isn't his fault. It shouldn't be a stick to beat him around the head with. He does some really good stuff well. Movement, link play. Um, he stretches play. He terrifies the life out of defenders as well. Honourable mentions for Kenny McLean, who I thought was good tonight. Gabriel Sarah, who I thought was good tonight. I wanted to finish by talking about Max Aarons. 200th Norwich City appearance tonight. You've got good money at that at different points uh, over the years. He's been linked now with, with every club in Europe, it seems. There was obviously an offer from Barcelona. There was an offer from Roma as well. Uh, it's really interesting, just as a complete side note, and as I lose my train of thought, that those two offers have come from European clubs rather than English clubs. And constantly I've kind of asked myself, why is that the case? Why haven't an English club come in for Max Aarons and come in hard for Max Aarons? I think it would be absolutely different if, if Carlo Ancelotti remained at Everton before he went to Real Madrid. I think he probably would have gone in, in those circumstances. But I, I do wonder if the height is, is maybe putting people off and it absolutely shouldn't. I thought tonight actually kind of exemplified what he is. Consistent, reliable, classy, um, competent, capable, all of the, the superlatives that you want to throw in there. But for a player 23 years of age to make 200 appearances, he's the youngest Norwich City player ever to do that, replacing Dale Gordon uh, in the process. It's a magnificent achievement. There are players, Kieran Dow, Jakob Sorensen, who have a couple of years on him and haven't played anywhere near the amount of football that he has played. Norwich is a few, huge credit for the way they've handled his development. Daniel Farker, of course, initially, maybe less so Dean Smith, but David Wagner as well, who seems to kind of be getting him into this system and utilising him in a, in a really good way. Um, and I think we saw that tonight and, and you know, obviously got a, a wound for his troubles, um, but that kind of exemplifies what he is, willing to take one for the team, willing to um, to battle, maybe has this, this kind of, and again, that, that kind of height issue that I spoke about, I, I think he has qualities in other areas, attacking qualities in particular, that make him a very, very, very good player at this level. And it's going to be interesting come the summer. Um, and as I look to my left, I can kind of see his representatives and, uh, and, a, and a few of his friends. So maybe I'll be careful how I say this, but it's, an, it's a big summer for him because he, he, his contract runs out in 2024. Either he signs a new one and he commits to Norwich City or they sell him. Uh, I don't really see an alternative there. It's not a situation where you can kind of let his contract run down. I don't think in the same way to Todd Campwell's because yes, they've got a lot of value out of him in terms of 200 games, but the asset that he is, he's always been kind of on a different level to, to Todd and, and, and to others in terms of his value. And so I think if, if Norwich were to let that run down and then ultimately lose him for nothing, that would feel like a, a really missed opportunity for them. So interesting summer. I obviously hope he signs a new contract and he stays here, but he has aspirations of playing at the top level. He absolutely should. He has the qualities to do that. Um, irrespective of what happens now, I think most people of a Norwich City persuasion will look at him and, uh, and wish him well regardless. So there we have it. Norwich one point off the playoffs. It's uh, it, it's a good start to what is a big week. They, they've obviously got Cardiff here on Saturday as well, struggling Cardiff. Um, a win could move them back inside the top six. It completely changes it. Obviously, we need to see the level of, import, uh, of performance increase and remain consistent. But it does feel now like we're seeing slow improvement under David Wagner. Um, kind of makes that Wigan draw away from home. Maybe not, not feel as bad as it did in, in the moment because... Um, they followed it up with three points. It's now seven points in three games. It will be 10 in, in four games if they can win on Saturday. That's a decent return. That's kind of the form that they're going to need to get into the playoffs between now and the end of the season. So, um, fingers crossed we can maintain this level and we can continue to see the types of improvement that we're seeing under David Wagner. And actually what we saw in the second half becomes uh, fewer in terms of minutes and it, it wasn't as big a spell as it has been in other games but also they can kind of eradicate it further. But they're looking, they're looking better at this moment in time. And, uh, and that's a real positive. Plenty more at Pinkin.com. Plenty more on the Pinkin Plus app. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Three points, three goals, closer to the playoffs. See you again on Saturday.